His active political career commenced upon his retirement as Chief Education Officer, October 31, 1975. After he had served as a Minister of Government and the Labour Party lost office back in 1980, he then became the leader of the opposition. I wasn't here, I was in Jamaica pursuing my medical studies. And so uh, when I came back, the party was in opposition and Mr. Mills um, came to the fore as one who I was to replace in constituency number six. And I had full support from him as he passed the mantle of leadership of that constituency to yours truly. I believe that the blessings which he gave me um, on the passing of the battle have done me well because I have continued to not only hold on to the constituency that he passed to me, but I believe I have continued the program of progress and development in that constituency. And to the point where the people have been so supportive that as their leader, they also gave me the opportunity to serve as the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Mills ran a very tight ship as Minister of Finance. Consequently, when he became leader of the opposition, it was only natural for him to scrutinize with a fine-tooth comb the activities of his successor, the new Minister of Finance. That if the people of this country who are the masters, they are the ones who have the last word. And you cannot treat people like that. They spend money, they pay money, it is via taxes. They elect representatives into this honorable house. The Minister of Finance is given approval to spend $46 million. And he cavalierly spends $17.9 million more as his money is going out of style. And then comes to the house and says not a single word of how the extra money was brought about. What caused extra money to be spent? Mr. Speaker, I do not believe that the Minister of Finance is so naive as to believe that we on this side of the House will accept that trite. The education system today is a legacy of Mr. Charles Egbert Mills. He worked through its ranks, driving in pivots to strengthen it along the way. Mr. Mills was a pioneer, having followed the identical curriculum that was um, he had seen in England at the comprehensive school. He tried to introduce some of the ideas in, in St. Kitts. Indeed, as if to strengthen the claim that St. Kitts being the mother colony of the British West Indies, the efforts of St. Kitts to establish the comprehensive secondary school in various parts of the island was in turn adopted by um, several of the other islands. But St. Kitts was the leader in this respect. Mr. Mills was an avid reader and he kept in touch with the trends of educational development in England and also in Canada. He had studied education development in the comprehensive system in England where he visited. As part of the innovative movement, Mr. Mills initiated the summer program for teachers, this he organized in conjunction with Mr. Hugh Parley, a Canadian educator who was instrumental in getting to organize the training of teachers at our local teachers training college. Another initiative was the accentuation of government scholarships to the grammar school and the girls high school. I have had the opportunity to serve in the community under him as the representative. Um, actually, um, when, for example, Mr. Bratcher had died and we were to um, have a monument erected in the community um, on his behalf, Mr. Mills was the parliamentary representative at that time and I was the chairman of the community council and so I had opportunities to interact with him. He being the parliamentary representative, 
and I being a young leader in the community of St. Paul's, I had the opportunity again to interact with him. And so the interaction has been long, has been close, and that is why um, today I am very, very proud to say that I knew him, I know of him, I recognize the work that he has done, and I really consider it an honor and a privilege for me to be in this position as the Prime Minister, to respond to the call to have the school in Sandy Point, the Sandy Point High School, named in his great honor. The students of St. Kitts and Nevis continue to build on this solid educational foundation with the 82.11% pass rate noted by the Minister of Education. The CSEC results proved to be the highest national rate thus far. Well, I think that um, the new generation um, tend to think that it was always like that. Um, they don't th believe or that they, they are not cognizant of the fact that it was a struggle. It was a struggle to move from a school where the children simply carry their pen and exercise books um, to the learning environment to the point now where I think almost all the parents endeavor to buy the books for their children. And uh, the number of um, persons who give scholarships to needy children and provide them all the, with all the books. When we look at where we are today, younger people, I think, need to understand. I think older people understand much better, much more clearly, that the successes we are enjoying now are as a result of the foundation that was built by people like Charles Mills. He had a vision. He had an opportunity as a principal of schools, as a chief education officer, as a politician, to have made a contribution to ensure that the policies which he had in his own head were implemented. They were articulated at the very highest level and at the very lowest levels as well, to ensure that there was a buy-in and to ensure that through his own interventions, we are now able to reap so many of the rewards. And so I want young people in particular to understand, young people in particular to understand that the fact that they can move into a high school, well, firstly, a primary school, but secondly, into a secondary school without having to compete for a space and expecting teachers and principals who are not only there to do a job, but teachers and principals who are well trained. Mr. Mills himself was a pupil teacher and he taught teachers to teach. He was a supervisor of teachers. And all of these are the foundational elements for what we have today, the teachers college. And as we move into, as we move our students into secondary school, they're able to learn in an environment where they have teachers and principals who are well trained. And I believe that the training that we have been able to afford them over the years is to a large extent as a result of the work which people like Charles Mills and others have done. He remembered as one who helped the poor because he came from poor people, from poor family, a poor family. Because his parents could not afford to send him to grammar school. And to see now that every child, every single child in St. Kitts can go to the high school. I know that he felt happy about that. <laughs> Instructor of Human Resources, Steadfast Administrator, Architect of Comprehensive Secondary Education, Charles Egbert Mills.